Larry is a good background. Awesome. Bring it in. I'll see it. Okay, so this is for this is for uh, our good friends uh, Zach and Regent. So if we want to look at series and summation notation, again, uh, a series is a sequence that has addition in it. So we're going to practice writing a few of these. We're going to see what you can do. Okay. And the way that we do it, again, is we write the sum. And how many terms do we have? So we begin with n is equal to 1, and we go all the way up until 5. So the bottom is the beginning, the top is the end. And then we need to write the rule after it. Do you remember what the rule is here? Negative 2 to the nth power. And n being represents the term number. So first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term. So if you were to write this out, expand it, again, you would generate all the terms and you would add them together. So does this have, does this add up to a specific number? Yeah, I have five numbers here. They add up to some number. Okay, they add up to a very specific number. Uh, not necessarily, not necessarily a special one, like, you know, eight or pi or something like that, but these do add up to an exact amount. Is this finite or infinite? Finite. Okay, so we're looking at finite sums right now. All right. Um, let's uh, do a couple more together. Okay, so summation. What goes on the bottom in this case? N equals 1. What will go on the top? 4. There are four terms. Does anybody see exactly what the... Good. 1 over 10 to the n. Let's try number three. Sum. What goes on the bottom? What goes on top? Six. Now, how about a rule? The difference every time, very good, Slovay, the difference every time is how much? Five. So it remains at a constant of five. So you can therefore see that there is a linear relationship. So you'll just have 5n to the 1 power. And now you just figure out how to make it fit. What's my first term? Well, 5 times 1 is not negative 6. So if 5 times 1 is 5, how do I get to negative 6? I subtract 11. And if you simply try that for the remaining ones, you'll end up with that same result. Okay? So look at the second one. 5 times 2 is 10, minus 11 is negative 1, so on and so forth. I would like you to see if you can figure out, and, and you know, if you don't like four, try five. If you don't like five, try six. See if you could go ahead and write summation notation for four, five, and six. Go ahead. Okay, so I saw a lot of you guys get, uh, you know, maybe two of them right. Maybe you didn't get a third one. You had a couple questions. Overall, you guys did very well to identify the summation. You put the number on the bottom. You then put what goes on top here. Six, so there's six terms that we're adding up. And then if you look at it, the top is always one, isn't it? And so here's how I find the bottom. Again, I write one, two, three, four, five, six. That's n. Okay. How does the bottom relate to n? Well, it's three times n. So the bottom will be three times n. There's no surefire way. I can't give you a formula to always know how to figure these out. Okay, I wish I could. A lot of people got five. You did very well. You saw there's a constant difference of six. So n is equal to one. It goes all the way through five. And you had six n plus one. Excellent. Just a show of hands. Show me if you got that one on your own. Okay, good. All right, the last one uh, may appear a little bit difficult to some people. Uh, how many did I add up? Seven. And uh, it simply oscillates back and forth between negative one, doesn't it? So you notice that when you have an 
odd n, it's negative. When you have an even n, it's positive. So that has everything to do with the power that you're taking it to. So simply negative 1 to the nth power. Negative n would give you negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So raise your hand if you got the negative 1 and the nth power on your own. Good job. Good job. There you go. Okay. All right. Let's uh, try a different model now. Let's uh, expand the series and evaluate it. Okay. So now we're going to take in summation notation and understand what it looks like when we spread it all the way out. So I have k equals 4 is the first one. And so uh, when we write the rules, we'll always start at 1, as I told Megan. They have us starting at k equals 4, and we go to 8, and they would like us to expand it. What would be the first term? 4 over 4, which is 1. I have to write plus. What tells me I write plus? The sigma sign, sigma notation. Do you see this sum? What is the next one? What's the next term? 5 over 4. What's the next? 6 over 4, which is 3 over 2. If you want to leave them all in fourths, that might help you as you actually add them up. I'll leave it as 6 fourths, just so we can see. I'll even put the first one as 4 fourths. What's the next one? 7 fourths. And the last one? fourths. So you started with a value of k equals 4. You end with a value of 8. <laughs> because we started, look here, if you start with 4 and you go to 8, that's a total of 5 numbers. 4, 5, 6, 6, 7, and 8. Okay, got it now? So as we look at this, now we add them up. Uh, 4 and 5 is 9. 6 is 15. 7 is 22. 8 is 30. So 30 over 4 is 15 over 2. What's 15 over 2? 7.5. So this thing right up here, this sigma notation piece, it actually has a value, 7 and 1 half. Okay? It actually has a numerical value to it. We can figure out exactly what it adds up to. Is this finite or is it infinite? It's definitely finite. Okay. Uh, I'll have you uh, do a... Uh, if it goes on forever, it's infinite. Uh, does it say k minus 2? Okay, so we should do this one together. Okay, so it says expand. So the first one will be 5 to what power? 5 to negative 1, which is 1 fifth. What's the next one? 5 to the 0, which is, I'm going to write it as 5 over 5. I'm just doing this to keep my fractions in order. What's the third one? 5. So 25 over 5. And what's the fourth one? 5 squared 25, which is the same as 125 over 5. So all I did is I just created common denominators. I just created common denominators so I could add it more quickly. 125 plus 25 plus 5, 155 plus 1, 156. So this adds up to 155 over 6. Okay? Or 156 over 5, excuse me. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do it again, okay? One more time, watch this, okay? Hannah, you'll get it. Watch, you'll, you'll get it. You'll, you, get, you have your eyes up here, though, watch. Okay? See, the first one is uh, one-fifth, right? First one's one-fifth, second one is one, third one is five, then 25. 
I just I just wrote it with a common denominator of five so that I could add it up more quickly. See that now? You try nine and ten on your own. Go ahead. Uh, for 9, the first value would be you plug the 2 in, 2 squared is 4, then make it negative. So all the values will be negative, okay? See if you can do 9 and 10 on your own. Go ahead. And then I'm going to show you guys a shortcut. Okay, um... Let's just uh, see what you got. So what did you get for uh, uh, 9 for the total sum? Well, let's think about it. Okay, so Emma sees it. They all have to be even because they're powers of 2, and you cannot subtract two even numbers and get an odd at any point. So it does have to be the even result. So I'm going to go with negative 1.4. Um, sorry, Ann. Oh. So, oh, who had 125? Okay. Okay, all right. You're, you are very smart. Okay, how about B? Okay. Now, what I would like to do now is show you uh, something that kind of has, has a little bit of an interesting relationship here, okay? It says evaluate each series, okay? Now, there is, okay, there is what we would uh, refer to as kind of formulas to make some of these work out a little bit better. And that's where I really want to head and where we ended off last year with mathematical induction. Now, we're not going to do that today, but I just want to show you something so you, you see exactly how this is going to work, because you will use this, okay? You will use this. Uh, you'll use it second semester. When we come back to it, you'll be like, oh, yeah, I saw that, okay? So here, let's just write out the series first so you understand, okay? I'm starting at K equals 12. What is the, what is the 12th item of this series? Do you know? Three. What is the 13th item of the series? Three. Yeah. How many threes will there be? Nine of them. Three times nine, which is 27. So you can see that if you have a constant for a rule, you simply need to t take the constant times the number of terms that there are. That's it. Take the constant times the number of terms that there are. Now look at this one right here. Numbers 1 through 40. Okay? Well, that's a little bit different. What's the first number? Instead of showing you the first number now, I'm going to ask the last number. Okay, what's the second number? Second to last number. Third number. Third to last number. Do you see it? Showed it to you last year. They, you can pair them up to add to what? 41. So we can make quick work out of this. We can say, well, there's going to be how many pairs? 20 pairs of 41. It's 20 times 41. 820. Uh, 13, you got k equals 1 to 10 of k squared. What's the first term? Plus. Right? Can't really pair these up to come with uh, a, a same sum every time. But we can use something called mathematical induction. I'm not going to do the example now, but you could come up with a nice formula. In fact, it says 
that if you add up a certain number of n squares, you get n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. And so if I want to know what this adds up to, I just decide how many of the first squares I'm actually adding up. And I plug that in for n. How many are we adding up? 10. What's 10 times 10? I'm sorry, 10 times 11? What's that? I, I just uh, I pulled it from your book. Um, you don't have to be able to generate that. I'm going to show you how to generate that on Monday. Okay, but if you take uh, 10 and plug it in here, 10 times 11 uh, times in 21 and divide it by 6, you're going to come out with the correct result. Somebody wants to do that on your calculator real quick. 385. So that's quicker than adding them all up, right? That brings us to two types of series. Number one is arithmetic. Arithmetic means you have a common difference. What is the common difference, okay, for number one? Uh, so the difference is negative 17. With that knowledge, what would be the next term? Negative 44. If it does not have a common difference, then it's not arithmetic. See if you can determine 1, 2, 3, and 4, whether or not it's arithmetic, and if it is, what the common difference is and what the next term is. Not all of them are arithmetic. See if you can try 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so let's look at number 2. Can you figure out the next term? Yes, but is there a common difference? No, it jumps back and forth between positive and negative 12, so therefore this is not arithmetic. If you look at 3 and you rewrite it as tenths, what do you notice is it's going up by each time? A half. So your difference is equal to 1 half. So this term, 14 over 5, is 28 over 10. If you add a half to that, or 5 tenths, you end up with 33 tenths you should have. Everybody got that? How about the last one? No. Uh, here you go up by 2, 4, 8. You obviously see exactly what's happening. However, it is not arithmetic because it has a different difference. So, not. The nice thing about an arithmetic sequence is it's easy to write the rule. The rule is this. a sub n is equal to a sub 1 being the first term plus parentheses n minus 1 times the difference. Now, you were able to figure out rules for arithmetic sequences very easily early on. But that's because we always started with the first term. Had we not started with the first term, it would be a little bit more difficult. So there's times where we're going to want to use other things to our advantage. So it says find the 12th term of the arithmetic sequence. We start by finding the difference, then writing a rule, then finding the 12th term. D is equal to what? 11. I am now going to write a rule. A sub n, so the nth term, is equal to, what's a sub 1? 21 plus n minus 1. What's my difference? 11. You don't have to simplify that to now use it, but I'm going to because I think you guys would like it. I will distribute this 11, and I'll come up with 11n. And then I'll have a negative 11, won't I? 21 and negative 11 make plus 10. So that is my rule for finding another term. So if I want to find the 12th term, what do I plug in for n? 11 times 12, 
132 plus 10. Now you maybe said, well, I could have found that by just carrying out the sequence. Well, we, we could change it and say the you know, 12,000 term, and then you wouldn't have done that. You would have said, I want to find a rule. See if you can do the same thing for 6, 7, and 8. Go ahead. And that's where we'll uh, end today. I promise uh, you'll, you'll get homework next week. Can you tell me what you got for six? That was a 12th term. What was a 12th term from number seven? Can we do a seven together? How about eight? Okay, so to let you guys know where we'll go then, on Monday, we're going to deal with things called geometric series. So instead of there being a con constant difference, there's a constant ratio, meaning you multiply by something. And then I will teach you guys how to add up a finite number of things, but I will also teach you how to add up an infinite number of things. And then we'll move into our mathematical induction, and your homework will, will start to grow. So... Enjoy no homework this weekend. Uh, get ready for Monday. I hope you guys have a great first weekend.